I think so many people choose Muscata Tuck as part of the Eagle Project primarily because of just how amazing this place really is. If you think about all the wildlife that's out here and the public access that's out here, it's a perfect place to give back to the community. My name is Adam Lucky. I am John Sheldon. Uh, my name is John Stout. My name is Jason King. My name is Andy Higginbotham. My name is John Leslie. My name is Zachary Mellick. My name is Garrett Cute. So my project was um, to tear down an existing latrine um, restroom facility here um, and then to construct a new one that was handicap accessible. Uh, we actually, you can see it right there, we built a uh, fence around the uh, HVAC system, uh, air conditioners that they have out here at the refuge, um, just to blend in, designed to blend in with the building and kind of make it look a little more visually appealing. Uh, those were new that year the year before they'd put in that new equipment and so we uh, dug out all around it put in uh, fencing and the rocks um, you know at the base of the fence and all that my project it consisted of the refuge needed a bridge over an area where the creek had I guess surrounded itself or made a new creek and they just needed an add-on to what was already there and they provided all the materials. My project was leading the construction of four picnic tables for Muscatatuck Wildlife Refuge to replace the what, what, worn down ones, the weather damaged, and vandalized ones. So my project was a complete redo and refurbishment of the Wood Duck Trail. So at before project, uh, it was completely mud, soupy. Uh, you could barely walk in it if we had weather like what we have had this week where it's been very wet. And so my project was to go in and to apply uh, as much gravel and lime on the trail as possible so that way an individual would be able to walk or a person that would be in a wheelchair or things like an ATV or something like that would be able to access the Wood Duck Trail and to be able to complete the half mile loop. My project was just they, they told me they needed a display case for their ducks and birds so everybody made fun of me because I had to make a duck case <laughs> so yeah I made a display case for them. The internship house here at Muscatatuck Wildlife Refuge, they have certain regulations that they have to uphold for each of the doors on the house. And the one in the front here, we had to make it accessible to the patio, which already had the handicap ramp on the other side of it. So we had to build a basically a platform so that they could walk out and access the patio and can get out if they're, if they're handicap accessible. And then on the side of the house, they had two doors that they converted from windows that needed stairs leading down to the ground. So we also did that. My project was actually in with another Eagle Scout project, um, which was done by Jason King. He uh, created a latrine, and there was no easy way um, for access for wheelchairs and stuff to get back to the latrine and also for them to purge the septic, septic out with the tankers. So I created a pathway that was eight foot wide, 40 foot long, a foot and three inches deep, and it was completely gravel. We had to cut through roots and stuff with the trees uh, so it would not grow back and it would be there for a long existing time. So the completion of my project, probably the thing that stood out the most was the sheer amount of work that went into it. I honestly kind of underestimated the amount of time, effort, and energy with that, that would have to go into the project. I figured uh, my troop and I and some friends could complete it in one weekend, maybe two. It took five over the course of five months. Um, 
that's probably what stood out the most was just the sheer amount of time and energy. There was one weekend that we were working where it was like here, where it was very damp, very wet. And to be able to move the wheelbarrows, it required two people, one to push and one to pull the wheelbarrow, filled with stone and lime. And so just the amount of work, energy, and time that went into it, I think is what stood out the most. And from that, it was incredibly rewarding, right? Because I myself with the help of others put in an insane amount of work and created a trail that is accessible to just about anyone so it was totally worth it but i would have to say the thing that stood out the most was the amount of time and energy that i misunderestimated for the project the most uh, kind of important thing that i learned about uh, from my project as an eagle scout was to um, work with people and planning uh, i think you know as a, as a young kid it's easy to think that you can just pick up the telephone and, you know, say I need something and it happens and you don't have to follow up with people and everything just goes perfectly, um, like in a movie or a book or something. But uh, doing this project, I actually had a couple uh, false starts with other projects we tried to do and then got into this and having to get material lists and work with different people from the refuge for design and for cost and for all the different aspects of that. Um, it was really a good opportunity to learn um, kind of, I guess, project management is, is a skill that you're trying to learn there, but sort of see the real world um, as how you have to deal with that sort of thing. Nothing goes as planned. You always end up having to somewhat improvise doing things, no matter what you're doing. So uh, to me, that was a pretty great life lesson, knowing that never, nothing's ever going to go as planned. The amount of roots. Uh, when we started the project, we had some 150-year-old tree plus. Uh, the roots, I mean, they were 20 feet from the, you know, where our pathway was going to be. But the amount of roots in there, and we did everything by hand. We had no equipment. It was all shovels, axes. Um, I mean, the materials were, you know, donated to us to get it done. But uh, it was a lot of manual labor, more than I even imagined. So I was unexpecting that. Um, I think what stood out the most to me when, when completing my project were just some of the different ways that, that government services work. Um, during uh, 1995, there was a lot of um, debate on the, on the federal level with the budgets. And so um, having to get my plans approved uh, to do the project, including the budget, um, I had a lot of, a lot of the federal workers that had to do or that were responsible for those decisions were um, on furlough, so they were not working and could not approve it. So it really delayed my project by, I, I would say, about four months uh, before we could really get started. So that, that stood out. Um, then the next thing that really stood out was just the willingness of uh, people in the community to, to help and step up and, and spend a lot of time working on the project. What stood out most to me was that all the people, I realized that all the people who came out to support me and who, was, who really were my friends and who came to, to help me when I needed them most. The part that most stood out to me was the uh, amount of support that I had. There were Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts from not only my troop, but other troops willing to come out and help. I meant a lot. The purpose of the Eagle Scout Service Project is to give uh, a young man real world experience on tackling a project. Um, from the planning stage, uh, through development, through engaging others and giving good leadership and then wrapping it all up and being accountable uh, for the project itself. I really believe that it gives uh, a young man confident, confidence, uh, knowing how to interact with other people and uh, is, is a real world situation that they can benefit from later in life. For about six months leading up to the To My Eagle project, I was kind of bouncing off with my scoutmasters, uh, Tony Berenger and Roger Schaefer, on some possible ideas to do for my Eagle project. I was having a scope issue. I was wanting to do things that were way too much or way too little. And Tony and Roger had suggested doing something here at Muscatatuck. And 
there were multiple scouts from my troop 549 before me that did projects here and so they had kind of suggested that maybe I look at Muscatatuck contact the refuge ask them what it is that I can do to help also I don't like you know, my parents only are about 15 minutes away from here so traveling to do this work wasn't going to be intensive it wasn't going to be that I would need to have to drive an hour to get to my project I could drive here in 15 minutes and so um, with the advice and guidance of my scout masters with the fact that it was close and um, with talking to my mentor who uh, is Donna Stanley um, talking to her talking to my scout masters it became a really easy decision to do my project here and talking with Donna we floated around a couple different ideas and she and I both felt that the wood duck trail met the scope of the project um, met the time requirements for the project and something that would be able to be done and would actually positively impact the refuge beyond um, just some minor stuff so it was a nice healthy project and a substantial project but one that could be done um, I had looked at several different projects um, as I prepared um, to do mine. Um, I had earned my Life Scout uh, or Life Badge, I believe, in 1994, and it took me a year or two to figure out which project I really wanted to do. Um, I had heard that there were several other good projects that had been done here at the refuge in the past, and so I reached out to uh, the refuge for some ideas as far as projects that they would like to see and when they presented me with the project that I ultimately completed um, it just felt like what could add the most value out of all the options that I had. I chose Muscatatuck to do my Eagle Scout project uh, mainly the main reason was I liked the outdoors and I didn't I wanted something like out in, in the woods something that would last um, it just, I liked being out here. Uh, as a kid, my family came out here off and on, and I just enjoyed it. So I decided to come here and talk to the management here and to see what kind of opportunities they had. And then I looked around, and that's when I decided to, to do the pathway um, for the latrine. I uh, called Donna Stanley. I asked if there was anything I could do. She says, well, we do need some uh, picnic tables. And I said, and I thought, well, I'd never done picnic tables before, and I do like challenges, so I, you know, I figured I'd give it a shot. I decided to do my project here at Muscatatuck because this was a place that uh, our family had visited for as long as I can remember. I remember as a really little kid coming out uh, to the refuge and enjoying the trails and um, seeing birds and just all the different uh, activities that you can do out here. And so I was pretty familiar with it and knew that there's always a need for uh, Eagle Scout projects at a place like Muscatatuck and when I approached them about it they were really easy to work with and uh, just helpful and friendly and really excited to work with so it was a great opportunity to work with some easy to get along with people. What made me think about Muscatatuck was um, we always came out here whenever we were young to look at the wildlife and everything and it was my dad's decision or idea to come out here and give back to this place because it does a lot for us too. The Boy Scouts have been doing work here long before I ever came to Muscatatuck. Uh, in reading some of the past history of the refuge, uh, Boy Scouts were involved here from the very beginning with service projects. The first few years, uh, they, they helped refuge staff clean up areas of the refuge. Uh, they've, they've cleaned up old dumps, they planted trees, uh, they spread gravel on hiking trails and walkways, and they've just done a tremendous amount of work. They even helped with things like duck banding and goose banding. And then we got into eagle projects, which have been a variety of, of different things. The refuge has always been very short on people. We've always had a, just a very small number of employees. And the Boy Scouts have greatly added to our workforce. Uh, they've done a lot of things on Muscatatuck that wouldn't have been done otherwise because we didn't have the people to do it. I feel pretty happy because it made it uh, more accessible for the interns and it met the regulations that they had to fulfill so I saved them from actually having to do it themselves so uh, overall I feel pretty happy about it.
I feel like I've done a service to what they needed to be done. I feel happy that I was able to provide it. Uh, when I think about my contribution to the refuge, I feel that um, it's a great was a great opportunity to add something that maybe isn't an obvious contribution that uh, people think, oh wow, this is a new trail that wasn't here before, but it's something that helps make the experience uh, smooth and you know more nature oriented because you don't have that big glaring HVAC right in your face as you drive up. It makes me feel, you know, happy. You know, I made Eagle Scout, I did Eagle Scout project where people are, are going to be using it. When I think about my contribution to the refuge, I feel really positive um, and very proud. Myself, with the help of others, put in an extreme amount of work. I think total combined work hours were well over 200, and we put in a lot of work and produced a really good product. We produced a trail that was accessible to just about everyone. And it makes me incredibly proud, incredibly happy that I was able to contribute to the wildlife refuge that does a lot for the community and the area and the wildlife in it. When I think about my contribution to the refuge, um, I feel very connected and, and that I added value, even though my project is, is not currently standing and they've, they've replaced it with um, a little bit uh, more solid structure and, and up-to-date structure, um, I still feel like I added a lot of value to be able to help make um, facilities here at the refuge more accessible to all people. When I think about my contribution to the refuge, I feel very good um, that I did my part in helping the community and allowing people to love the refuge. When I think about my contribution to the refuge, I feel um, like I'm a part of something bigger, you know. Um, it feels good to help your community and uh, help it improve and help it grow and something that probably might last forever, you know, and people can see. What it feels like to come and see my tables, you know, still here, mostly in one piece, feels pretty good. It, it feels that uh, my Eagle Scout project, project wasn't, uh, you know, for no cause or anything. It actually served a purpose, and that, that feels really good. It means a lot that someone would take the time to ask about what I did. I, and it, it just, it, it's nice to know that people continue to use the trail, that people continue to... Um, or that the, the people are curious about the trail, curious about what I did. I mean, I talked about it a lot to friends and family after I completed the project, while I was working on the project, but for the most part, uh, it was a trail that was completed and nobody really worried about it. So for me, it's it means a lot that someone is taking the time out of their day to actually ask me about what I did. And um, and that it, it is cool that people still access the trail and use it after you know 10 years of it being um, basically repurposed and revamped. It brings about back a lot of memories of uh, me being out here with uh, my Boy Scouts. I mean, uh, my troop helped me do my Eagle Scout project, and it was, uh, it was a bunch of fun times, really. I mean, it was hard work and labor, but it just, it was fun, and I enjoyed it. What it means to me to talk about my Eagle Scout project now is that, uh, you know, it feels good to come back and remember all the good times we had and all the things we did and uh, how inspiring it was and the people who helped me make me who I am. It means a lot to me to talk about my project. Um, scouting just really laid the foundation for me um, in my life and um, helped me to understand what it was to be a citizen in our community. And so to be contacted to talk about my project, just it just further establishes that uh, that importance of scouting in our community. What what means to me now about my project is it brings back a lot of memories. I personally never thought that I would come back out here and I'm glad that I have been now and thanks to you I get to relive all that. It means a lot. What it means to me now talking about an Eagle Scout project is that uh, scouting and the things that you learn as an Eagle Scout uh, stay with you for a long time. It's been uh, probably 13 years since I 
did my project, 12 years since I did my project, and it's still something that um, not only is hopefully meaningful to the refuge, but is able to um, have an impact on other scouts, people that are coming up through the program today. Um, and that's, I think, being an Eagle Scout has had an impact on my life for that whole time, and so I enjoy talking about this sort of thing still. Uh, it says to me the importance that the refuge is, it has in our community here in Indiana, um, that so many people are devoting their time and resources to making it a better place. Um, it also shows, I think, the support that scouting has in the community that that, um, that many projects have, have been done here um, and, and how scouting is so committed to, you know, not only the development of leadership in, in our youth today um, in, in teaching overall community commitment, but also our commitment to uh, preserving nature. The fact that there's so, been so many Eagle Scout projects done here says to me that um, people really do care and that there's, uh, I'm glad there's always going to be a need and something for future boys to do and this place is always going to have something it needs and just to make it better and a better place for everyone. That uh, tells me that there's a good partnership here between uh, scouting and the refuge and that hopefully uh, scouts have been and will continue to be looking for ways to support our community and to work in nature and not just uh, always be, you know, in town and working on buildings and things but get out in the woods. It says that a lot of a lot of Boy Scouts like the outdoors. Um, we we thrive to stay in nature and make things better for the environment for the environment and for the community. So the fact that there have been over 30 Eagle projects here since 1981, I think, says a lot about the impact that Muscatatuck National Wildlife Refuge has on um, the surrounding communities, the surrounding counties here, and on the scouting organization as a whole, right? So the Eagle Project is about positively impacting the community that you live in, giving back to those who have helped you, and I think the fact that 30 people decided to do something substantial here to refurbish trails, build kiosks, um, do work at this uh, place, I think shows a lot about um, which is really the positive impact that this place has, and it and it's not surprising that 30 people would decide over the course of 30 years to do projects here. And so I'm I'm not surprised at all um, that that many people would have decided to do something here at Muscatatuck. Honestly, it's a lot more than I knew about. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see how much, as a community, we help them, and in turn, they provide us with a nice place to kind of view nature. So I think it's mutual in how we both feel. Being more than 30 Eagle Scout projects since 1981 out here, I think that's really awesome. I wish that there were more than that. I think it's impressive that more than 30 Eagle Scout projects have been conducted at Muscatatuck. And I believe what that says is uh, it's a tribute to the facility itself and it also speaks to uh, scouts' love of nature and their care of the environment. I think we're, we're so fortunate to have the Boy Scout help. Um, we've really enjoyed working with the, the young, young uh, fellows who have worked on the projects. Uh, it's been great to see the teamwork and the, the ingenuity that have gone into these projects, uh, the planning. It's, it's, you know, it's been a, it's been a wonderful experience just, just watching these projects happen. Uh, so we've very much, uh, on a personal level, I've very much enjoyed working with, with the Eagle Projects and they've done a tremendous amount of wonderful work for the visitors that come to Muscatatuck and for the refuge staff who have ne would have never got these projects done if it hadn't been for the scouts. So it's been a, a very good uh, relationship, partnership with the Boy Scouts and we hope it continues for the next 30 years also, at least. The thing I love most about Muscatatuck Refuge is that you can come out here anytime 
and you can see whatever wildlife you, you want to see. Like any day you can see bald eagles or deer or geese or otters or anything. It's quiet, it's peaceful, it's off the beaten track, and you can get lost here, right? So you can just walk around trails. Living in Indianapolis, it is so busy, so hectic, so loud. And to be able to come here where all you can hear is bugs, birds, nature, um, it's insane how peaceful and nice it is compared to a city like Indianapolis where at all times of the day you're hearing sirens, you're hearing horns. Um, and so with here, where all you hear are birds, bugs, I think that's the thing I like the most, is just that it's so peaceful um, and you can just get lost. You can just walk around as long as you want. You don't have to be around people, but if you do, you're lost with someone else. And so it's a really cool experience here. I think uh, what I love most about Muscatatuck is uh, the diversity in uh, wildlife and an experience to kind of get out back in the woods without having to go really too far from home. I remember coming out and there being uh, blackberries everywhere um, in some of the trails you could walk along and see uh, just all these berries everywhere and that was a fond memory I have for as far back as I can remember. What I like most about Muscatatuck is I've always enjoyed how quiet and peaceful it is out here. Even though there's a lot of people that come in and out, um, most of the times when you're on trails, you're kind of by yourself, you hear nature, you see nature, um, and you don't have a lot of interruptions of car traffic and noise and, and you know, horns, people yelling, screaming. Um, it's just, it's quiet and it's back to nature and it, and it feels good to be like that. What I love most about the Muscatuck uh, is that away from town. It's very quiet here. It's, you know, it's a lot, of, you know, you experience a lot of nature here. Um, if you need any help, there's always someone there to help you. Being able to come out and then get away from the city, get away from day-to-day -day life and then just enjoy yourself, watch uh, different animals, uh, even bugs, whatever you're into, I guess, whatever you want to see, just it's a good, nice play, uh, way to get away from the city and just kind of relax. Uh, what I love most about Muscatatuck is, um, you know, I live in the Indianapolis area now, and so it's really hard to get away from all of the noise of the city. And um, when I come down and visit my family still in Seymour and bring my children, it's great to let them see nature, um, to be able to see the different animals, to see the different trees, and, and to experience what it is to um, to live in this world and not just to live in a city. And um, I just think it's it's great to be able to appreciate what we have. I would like to thank my family, my mom, my uncle, who was a is a construction worker and helped me do a lot of the designs and everything and even came up here and helped us over the course of the three day weekend. I'd like to thank them and my, my troop for, I guess, helping me get to where I am. So without them, I would, I'd probably not be an Eagle Scout. I think it's a very fulfillment to become an Eagle Scout and I always think, encourage all Boy Scouts to not stop and finish because it's it just feels good even for years to come you, you think about all the memories you guys make uh, not even just as an eagle scout but as boy scouts and and all the people you meet and it's just a really good achievement so just encourage all boy scouts to finish i guess best of luck to future scouts and i'm sure there'll be many more projects to come i was excited i was gonna help uh, another uh, eagle scout you know complete his project and become like tomorrow's leader. Thank you for taking your time out of your day, uh, being a busy high school student, right? To um, actually care. The one thing I'd like to add is uh, I'd like to thank you for giving me an opportunity to help you and hope that you stay true to the Scout way and make everybody proud. My name is Joey Foist. My project was to create this documentary and I contacted eight Eagle Scouts 
and they came to Muscatatuck Wildlife Refuge and I interviewed them um, as close to the location as possible of their project. It was really cool to be able to meet them because I had only just seen their names on a sheet of paper with their project. It was really good to hear their projects firsthand. Um, it makes you almost feel like you could have envisioned it from their own perspective. Um, it was just really neat to be able to hear, hear the story in their own words. I think what stood out the most to me while completing my Eagle Scout project was just um, how everyone was so eager to help and how interested they were in my project. Um, I was very surprised at how um, grateful and all the Eagle Scouts were for asking them to come out and talk about their projects. They were very happy about it and they were um, very well-meaning about it and just all the amount of support from the people that work at Muscatatuck and the adults in my troop and um, from my parents. When I think about my contribution to the refuge, I feel like I made something for visitors when they come that they can um, understand all the amazing projects that have been completed here at Muscatatuck. Um, and it gives them an idea of how closely the refuge and the Boy Scouts have worked and um, how great the projects have benefited the refuge. I think what made me decide to complete my project at Muscatatuck was um, I have always come here. I can't remember a time when I wasn't here. Um, I've always enjoyed being here. Um, there's always a need for a project, so um, it was obvious that I would do it at my favorite nature location. I'd like to just say thank you to all the people who helped me in my project, all the Eagle Scout participants, all the Scout leaders, the staff at Muscatatuck, and all the other people who gave me encouragement and support because without them I wouldn't have been able to get anywhere near my service project. I'd have to say my favorite scouting memory was when we camped over at Camp Akela. It was Boy Scouts. We did a orientation course, but we didn't use any trails. It was like negative 13 degrees outside, and it was horrible, but I would definitely do it over again. I think my overall experience at, at working at Camp Mommy for five summers is, is probably what stands out, not as one um, experience as a whole, but just the overall experience, um, the friendships that I met there and, and the skills that I developed while working there. But the Boundary Waters, which is uh, up on the Canadian border in Minnesota, was one of my favorite uh, things with a week-long trip. Canoeing took everything that we needed for the weekend and packed it in our canoes for the whole week. My favorite scouting memory was uh, when I got the opportunity to go to uh, Sea Base in Florida. Being on top of Mount Baldy at Philmont probably have to be the night that I got tapped out for OA. Camp all me, um, all the boys together, uh, hanging out in the tents, playing games, going around campfires, telling stories, uh, just being together as a troop. I had a winter rendezvous at Camp all me, and I think it got down to probably negative 13 degrees at one point, and that was probably the most uh, it was always just kind of the legend, like the legendary camp out there. Everybody we went on, that everybody always talked about and always, always 
referred to and it was just a it was awful <laughs> there was, everybody was getting sick and then some kids tent collapsed on them and it was snowing inside it was a good time <laughs>